Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I'm doing the fantastic new Faces of Horror tag. So, I did have a video all set and ready to go for this Tag Tuesday slot. Um, but then while I'm at Plague by Visions, dropped this new Faces of Horror tag, and it's so good, I couldn't resist doing it and getting it out there quickly. So this is going to go up this Tuesday, and the video I did have recorded, I think will go up next Tuesday instead. Um, so I would imagine that everyone knows Wyan's channel already, given that he's a, pretty much a giant of booktube. Um, but he's, his channel is very much focused on horror, and he's created this brilliant original tag, which encourages us to think about horror in a broader sense and to think about all the different facets or faces of horror um, and you know really showcase horror as the wonderfully diverse and interesting and dynamic and you know evolving genre that it is. Um, so six simple prompts which I will go through. Um, I would also say that one has phrased these questions deliberately in such a way that they don't have to be about books so they can be about you know anything horror related, so books, movies, TV shows, games, you know whatever. Um, so I'm actually um, going to answer um, with non-bookish um, answers for some of the questions, um, partly because I thought it'd be interesting just to talk about some you know some movies and things like that, which I hadn't done that much of on the channel, um, and also because for some of these prompts it, it was actually a movie rather than a book that was the first thing that came into my mind. Um, so, right, without further ado, let's kick off then. So the first question is, um, a horror story that scared or disturbed you? So I'm actually going to give a couple of answers for this, um, and, and they are non-bookish ones. So for scared, so, so what I would say is I, I read an awful lot of horror, and I've watched a lot of horror movies in my lifetime as well. And, and when I'm reading horror, I can take pretty much anything. But when I'm watching horror, I'm a real chicken. <laughs> I'm really bad, seriously. I, I like jump scares just do me in completely. I do not like them at all. Um, so I am a much more nervous watcher of horror than I am reader of horror. Um, so I've got a couple of movies here um, and also a video game. So um, for the movies, so in terms of movies that scared me, um, I want to go with A Tale of Two Sisters. Um, which is a Korean horror film from, I don't know when it's from, I guess the early 2000s, um, which I saw at the cinema with my wife and God, it freaked us out. We were we were both literally watching it like that through our fingers, like hunkered down in the seats in the cinema. Absolutely terrifying. And I, I have not watched it since and do not intend to because I just found it too damn scary. Um, and then in terms of disturbed you, because I think those, I think being scared, and being disturbed are very different things. Um, for Disturbed You, the film uh, I'm going to choose for that, again, a film I saw at the cinema, is Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Um, the John McNaughton film from, well, I guess it came out late 80s, early 90s, um, which again, I, so I saw that at the cinema with a group of friends. Um, so I, I, when I was at school, I had a, had a bunch of friends who were really into horror movies, um, and we lived in, or near Cambridge, um, we all live near Cambridge, so in, in the UK that is not Cambridge, Massachusetts or wherever it is in America. Um, and the local art cinema in Cambridge had a film festival every year, um, and, which we used to go to. Um, and one year they had a load of horror movies on, which we were totally, you know, totally bought into. Um, and we went to see Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer at a late night showing, so like an 11pm 11, 11 showing. Um, we all had a, a sense of what it was going to be like because we were into horror. Um, but the vast majority of the audience did not. You know, we'd read, we'd read about this movie in Fangoria and, and magazines like that, but I think a lot of people went into it cold. And it was reasonably busy, um, given given it was an LMPM show. Um, I don't know if you've seen, you know, if you've seen the film, you will know it is an incredibly bleak and disturbing and graphic um, film about a serial killer based on you know based on a true story um, I think at least two-thirds of the audience walked out um, and there was one like moment of violence in the actual auditorium as well where there was there was one guy who seemed to be I think he was with there with some friends and I think he was probably stoned or something like that but he kept on kind of nervously laughing 
um, at um, you know the, the moments of horror and, and graphic violence in the film. Um, and at, at one point, the guy who was sitting in front of him, who was there with his girlfriend, they got up to walk out, and the guy turned around and said, "Stop laughing!" and punched this guy in the face. Um, so it, you know, it was a film that, that you know really had an impact on the audience and and you know on me as part of that audience. I think the you know the the mood in the cinema heightened the impact of the film but even without that it was you know it's a deeply disturbing film um and then i also wanted to talk about games in this as well so you know i've said i'm a bit of a chicken when it comes to films and that's definitely true for games as well um and i think it's you know in games because you are controlling what is happening you're even more sucked into it and so jump scares you know can inf can impact you even more <laughs> Um, and certainly I you know, remember playing the first Resident Evil game on, on my PlayStation when I was at university um, and, you know, jumping out of my seat, even even though it was a bit I'd done, you know, multiple times before. Um, I knew exactly what was going to happen and it still made me jump every time. Um, so, yeah, games as well as games as well as movies um, definitely, definitely have an impact on me. OK, question two, um, a horror story that depressed you or made you cry so i'm going to answer this with um a, a a book that Juan actually named um for a different prompt in his original video for this um and that's let's go play at the adams by Mendel johnson which i've done a, a video about which is up on the channel which is just an incredibly um again bleak and stark um film about a, a gang of kind of kids and teenagers who um imprison their babysitter um, and torture her and it's one of those books where the the um the antagonists that you know the, the the kids are so detached from morality and have been so warped by the society they live in um that you you kind of almost feel sympathy for them but more than anything you just feel anger they just seem so incredibly selfish um, and that sounds like a strange word to use um, to talk about, you know, acts of torture. You know, that doesn't, it's, you know, selfish sounds like too mild a word, but I mean it in terms of, you know, they are, they're doing this just because they're bored. You know, it's, you know, it, they, they have so little regard, regard for the lives of other people that it feels like, it almost feels more like selfishness than it does deliberate sadism. Um, so yeah, a, a an, an excellent book, um, very affecting and, and very bleak, and it you know it moved me deeply. So the next prompt um, is a horror story that made you laugh. Um, so for this one, I'm going to go with Slugs by Sean Hudson, a British horror novel from the early '80s, and this is one of those one of those books. It's not deliberately funny, um, and also it's not one of those books that's so bad it's funny. Um, but he's just got such um, a, such a gloriously twisted imagination. Um, and and relishes the gore in the book so much and goes to such lengths to um to you know set things up to be as horrific and gory as possible um that it's a an absolute delight to read and made me made me laugh <laughs> with pleasure at times which sounds terrible doesn't it but if you've read the book you'll know what i mean it's just so wonderfully over the top it's brilliant okay next prompt is a horror story that made you angry um, I'm going to go with another um, British story for this one, um, which is the recent horror novella um, Dear Laura by Gemma Amore, um, which is about a, a young woman who's being kind of stalked and terrorised by a psychopath. Um, and it's, I mean, it's an excellent story, um, but it's also, you know, infuriating because of the fact that, you know, the people around um, Laura, the central character, you know, do not take her plight seriously at all. Um, and it's you know this this guy goes unpunished for a very long time and it's left to to Laura to you know to to sort things out and I got I found you know myself getting so angry at both you know everyone around her but also um at, at the guy himself who was just you know making her life misery um it's a again a very affecting book and um definitely worth reading um Okay, prop number five, a horror story that is important to you. So I'm going to go with a movie again for this one. I did think about a few books, but I'm going to go with a movie instead. And, and that movie is Alien. Um, so, you know, a classic horror movie. Um, and for me, 
very important to me. So, as I said, when I was at school, I used to hang around with, you know, a group of friends who were all into horror and Alien and the Aliens franchise, which which at that point was just Alien and Aliens, um, was really important to us. It was, a, you know, a big part of our friendship and we watched those movies together, you know, many times. Um, Alien was the first proper horror movie I saw um, at, at the house of one of those friends. Um, and it was also... Um, in many years later, the first proper horror movie that my son saw, so, you know, watching it with me um, and his mum as well. Um, I think it's a great it's a great film anyway. But for me, it's important because of that, you know, that part it's played in my life. And it's not just um, horror that it was important to me about it. It's one of those films that kind of I, I came across or first saw when I was starting to fall in love with, with cinema as an art form and starting to really get into film criticism and things like that. Um, so, you know, I read a lot of stuff about Alien and, and Aliens at the time, as well as watching the movies. And then later, when I went to university and studied media studies, we studied, you know, we studied Alien. It was on the films we talked about a lot. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of it was there for, for many years as a very important part of my life. I'm not such a big fan of it now as I was back then, um, but it's still, you know, very important in terms of my journey, both as a as a film lover um, and as a horror fan. Um and then the final question is a non-horror story that you consider horror. Um, so for this one, I'm going to go with The Getaway by Jim Thompson, um, a crime novel from, I'm not sure now if it's the 50s or 60s, but, you know, back then, um, which is, I'm not going to tell you why it's horror, because that will spoil it for you. But um, it's it's about um, a couple who've been involved in a, in a robbery and are trying to get away and escape to Mexico. Um, and... Um, it just gets, you know, their their plight just gets worse and worse and worse. And there is a, you know, there's a fantastic ending, which is like really, really horrifying and just brilliant. It's one of the best endings of, of any novel ever, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, fan, fantastically horrible um, in, in a kind of deep existential way rather than a rather than a graphic violence kind of a way. Um, so, yeah, a fantastic book. And Jim Thompson's, you know, brilliant. If you haven't read it, I, I would recommend anything by him. Um, so that's me done. That's all of the prompts. Um, I'm going to um, tag a few people now and I'm quite deliberately mostly tagging people who I don't think are particularly into horror um, because I'd be interested to hear what non-horror fans make of some of these prompts and what kind of answers they give. Um, of course, as you know, as always, if I tag you and you don't fancy doing it or you, you know, you haven't got answers for all the prompts, then, you know, that's fine. No, no hard feelings. Um, so the people I'm going to take. So the first one, actually, I know d does really like horror and has read much horror, um, uh, but definitely interested to hear what he has to say. And that's Greg from Another Bibliophile Reads. Um, and then also wanted to tag um, Gina Stanya, um, Shelley Swearingen and Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Um, so three people who um, I don't believe are particularly into horror, certainly from what I've seen on their channels, but I would be very interested to hear what they have to say about this tag. Um, so, yeah, that's me done. Um, happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope you are having a good week so far. Um, take care and I will speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.